I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I see the skeleton standing with it in hands on our hearts. Yes. So the first uh, item is a presentation by Westchester Power regarding renewal of the Community Choice Aggregation Program. Did you want to come up? Yeah. Great. Come on up. Wherever you'd like to sit. <laughs> So I'm Jasmine Graham, I'm here on behalf of Westchester Power, um, and I'm just here to talk about the RFP process, how it went, and uh, just what's happening moving forward. So um, we completed our request for proposal for the bidding process in the energy suppliers on Friday, and we started with five um, ASCO, five energy supply companies who are interested. Um, by the time submissions came, three companies submitted proposals. Um, we went with Constellation again. Constellation is currently the supplier of the program. And again, we chose a 24-month contract. So the big criteria was pretty much the same structurally as the first time. Uh, residential rates had to come under the previous 12-month average, which was 8.26 cents. And commercial um, rates had to come under the previous 24-month average, which was 9.06 cents. And so the, other, the only change structurally to the contract really is that we were previously getting um, national wind power. So the green supply was backed by national renewable energy certificates, meaning they match all of our green usage and they put wind power on the grid somewhere nationally. Um, now moving forward, we're gonna have hydropower and it's gonna be from New York State. So all of the green supply customers will be matched with New York State Hydro, which will be put here on the New York State grid. So we're really happy about that. Um, to give you some context, the rates right now uh, for a standard residential account is 7.7 .7 cents per kilowatt hour. For a green account, it's 8 cents per kilowatt hour. And on the commercial side, it's 9.93 .9 cents for the standard and 9.97 for the green. So moving forward, we are actually having the same rate for our small commercial and our residential accounts. And those rates came in uh, pretty much exactly where they are now, which we're really happy about, because as I said before, the cap was 8.26 and 9.06. Uh, the new uh, standard supply rate is 7.709, compared to what was 7.7 .7 or 9.93. So you know, commercial accounts are saving two cents per kilowatt hour now, compared to what the rate was before. And then for the green supply, it's 7.959, so it actually came in lower than what we're paying now. Um, so we're definitely happy about that. Um, we have some updated numbers on how Westchester Power has done so far. In content territories, we've saved $14.1 million. That's from uh, June of 2016 through uh, September 2018. And um, in the entire program, which includes NYSE, New York State Electric and Gas Utilities up north, uh, we saved $15.7 million. If you flip again, you'll see Irvington's results to date. So here in Irvington, we have saved $343,000 in, or er, yeah, in 74, but that, that's uh, irrelevant. <laughs> um, and then, um, so that breaks down to essentially um, most accounts because you chose the green supplier and the green supply, which means they've saved about $200.66. Um, and if they were in the standard supply, that would be about 301.65. But that data is a little bit skewed because there's so few um, standard accounts, so it kind of skews, uh, you know, what those savings are. And then the green commercial accounts uh, saved $34.61. As I said, the new commercial rate is going to be about two cents lower than where it is now, so we expect those commercial rates to perform a lot more favorably. Um, the stand, you have no standard commercial accounts, so that's why there's the NA there. Um, you have also offset 12,322 metric tons of CO2. Uh, so that is equivalent to 2,639 cars off of the road for a year, or 30 million driving miles offset. Uh, my personal favorite is 319,339 tree seedlings growing for 10 years. 
Um, so definitely don't underestimate the environmental impact of what we're doing here. So just moving forward, the next step is obviously to sign the contract, which I know that you guys are working on. And then um, in terms of, you know, for residents, they'll receive a notification letter just like last time, and it'll be in, in mid-November. And it'll describe, you know, the new products. So it'll let them know that now we have New York State Hydropower. It'll let them know what the new rates are. And it'll also let them know how to opt out. So, you know, going on our website, westchesterpower.org, filling out the opt-out form under energy choices or giving our office a call on 914-242-4725. Again, anyone has the ability to opt out at any time with no penalty. Um, and, you know, we make it easy to do so. So it takes, you know, under two minutes if that's the case. But, you know, as we've seen, we've saved money and we're doing great things for the environment. So we expect a lot of participation. Just, just a quick update from our side, which is um, you already approve uh, essentially a draft of the contract and you left it in my hands to sign and with the final approval of the village attorney so we just got the contract like literally last week I think it was so we're working through that and hopefully we'll be signing that so you won't be seeing it again but you just know that it's going to continue oh and the last thing is that um, the, the current contract ends December 31st, so um, everyone will be rolled into these new rates starting January, depending on when the first meter rebate is. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Perfect timing, Mary. Oh, I got stuck behind two red lights and down the spare. That's true. Have a good night. Well, it's just about yeah. You know what? I wanted to point out two things. Well, I think from the. Put money. Okay. Okay. It's easier to have stuff in writing all back and forth. Okay. Um, so next is review the parcels recommended for parking and dedication. I'm not sure yet. Try to go through kind of we've stratified the the various parcels that are in and around the Irvington Woods. Uh, each have kind of different differing statuses, um, and so based upon the status that they have, is will kind of dictate what the next action might be. Um, so we'll try to try to go through that. Um, so what yeah. we we basically did is based on the charge you presented back to us several months ago. Um, we had many meetings and um, we took a look at all 19 parcels that make up uh, this area. And basically what we're, what we're proposing, the most exciting part is what I'm here to ask you to do is to consider creating something that could be called the Irvington Woods Park or something like that. And it would consist of 13 parcels out of the 19. Um, there would be six parcels that would be part of the woods. Everything is part of the woods. Okay, remember, all 19 are part of the woods. 13 we're asking you to either dedicate or pull together to create what, what would become the new Irvington Woods Park. What's important to remember is that all 19 of these parcels are governed by the rules and regulations that we have in our code 
that cover the Irvington parks. Uh, as you also know, we are beginning an extensive look at all of the rules and regulations that govern all parks. And throughout the fall, there will be a series of meetings, um, which I'm still trying to figure out how I'm breaking down. But I've committed to hold several meetings to give the community a chance to come in to not only speak towards what they think the rules of the woods should be, but the rules of all of our parks. We have situations in all parks that need to get looked at and discussed, and RPAC has been spending a great deal of time um, trying to figure out the best way to get as much community input as we can. Um, but back here, and this is to us is the starting point, because when we start developing the rules, we probably will look at things a little differently knowing that this new park will be created. So what we're doing is if you look at the map that Larry's put in front of you, <clears throat> everything inside of the green, and imagine if you will the green goes around here, this is where they can farm, everything in there is where the 19 parcels sit. Everything inside the yellow is what we are proposing to become the new Irvington Woods Park. Okay, this area over here is um, Macy Park. Okay, here's the reservoir. The reservoir is, has two parcels: one here and one here. Parking lot is located right here. And then there's that very steep hill there. So I'd like to go over each parcel just to let you know what fits in where. So um, regarding Westwood, which was where the conversation started with the presentation uh, by Chet, there are four parcels that are village owned with no restriction. That would all be included um, into, did you know, is that number black? Yeah. yeah. One, two, okay. Yeah. So one, two, three, two, three and four, you can see, are clearly part of what we'd ask to be in this part. Number, number, a little, yeah, that's, that's it's a little triangle. Yeah, it's zero, it's less than one acre, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. um, field point, which is, on their mark number five was already dedicated as a park, but we want it to become part of this one new park. Uh, number six, seven, and eight are part of Hermit's Grave, no restrictions, and we want to pull them in. And then the, the most controversial, or the one that had probably the most debate, because there was very little debate between the Woods Committee, um, RPAC, and staff as to how we got to this point. Um, Worthington Farm is that area in pink that you see. Access to it is extremely difficult. The terrain is extremely steep. steep. And, and, and if you look at the, you know, on a map where they show you the red lines, which kind of indicates slope well the red lines for that piece of property are, are almost non-believable however the reason i'm putting it on there and i actually think larry and i differ on this piece of property and that's where you guys are going to come in is the goal here was to protect our parkland the goal was to take the woods put it in a situation where it would be easier for you for us and all the layers in between to make the parkland say what it is and what we, I think, all envision it to be. There's not a downside to, to me, including Worthington Farms, because whether we put it in the park or not, we're still responsible for using our rules and regulations to govern it. So just like we have to, if we're not, we're not including the reservoir in this new park, but because the reservoir is part of the woods, our rules and regs would govern it. Same thing with Worthington Farm. So from my perspective, if you can put it in there, it just gives you another layer of protection that it stays a park. But it's the only one not contiguous, is it, that correct? Correct, correct. Nor, and, nor does it have frontage. Right. It, it has to do, it has to you would, you would likely need to acquire an easement or property, which both could be extremely expensive. 
So if, if you even wanted to invite anyone out correct, there. Correct. Correct. That's a, that's that's definitely another point. So these are this is a privately owned. Yes. Yes. Okay. So so those nine are ours, no restriction, easily fit into wanting to make it a park. Then there are four parcels. First number ten, which is. 51-1 uh, on the map. 10 is one of the scenic Hudson land trusts where there is a, there, there is a con cons conservation, conservation easement. easement, but it would be in the park. 11 is another piece of Westwood, which is also the second scenic Hudson piece of property. Same thing, some conservation easements, but would be in the park. And then it, Two last ones would be number 12 is the Jew property, which in the deed that the village created has some restrictions on it. And 13 is a Hermit's Graves uh, property, which also has some terminology in its deed that would limit its use. But all four of those would be part of the park. So you're taking those 13 parcels and you're gonna, we're asking you to, to consider making it one part. We see a lot of really good things about saying it's a park. Question. Sure. When you say that there's uh, limit, uh, restrictions on use, what do you mean? <laughs> you you mentioned that with that little piece that you said was in the Hermit's Grave for you. And you mentioned something over on the Westwood uh, scenic uh, Joe, 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 it's helpful. I don't want to, you know, they're generally, they're, excuse me one second, I think I can answer it quickly, without going into the individual details of it. Yeah. The, the restrictions that we're talking about are actually more restrictive than just a general parkland dedication. Right. So, you know, for example, some of the properties that are there have specific restrictions that require them to be either open space or passive recreation only. So that's beyond just the simple, yeah, so you cut some one and, and this uh, number 13 as well. So those, and, and of course the Jew property that we just acquired. Right. So, that's 12. So that's so, basically. So that goes beyond just a simple parkland dedication. Right, right. does it change Already. the regulations? Or would you, you no. know. No, I, I, no what, what, what happens is it, it, you know. Quite, well, again, our rules would govern it. Yeah. And the only time that you, things change is if someone proposes to do something on any of this land, that would be considered an alienation of parkland, which you know is a term we've learned quite a bit about. There are so many layers before someone would be able to do something like that, um, that again, I, I, we can never imagine it happening. But for the public's perception, and for us, I think it's important to stand up and say, this is parkland, these are our woods, and we are gonna preserve them as woods, the four pieces that we just mentioned, as Larry said, have an extra step on them already, which would make it even harder than the other nine that we're asking you to bring in right now. Okay. I would like to discuss the five. Um, the other. Joe, can I ask you a sure. question about that? Because one thing I don't quite understand how it would work. So let's say you make it all a park, and mm -hmm. there's certain parts of this park, ten to thirteen that you can't do things that you could do otherwise in the park. You're calling it all one park, how do you how do you put the limits on those parcels? So, so let's say people want to use it for some kind of a camping festivity. You know, they're all going to go out there and camp or whatever, which I think would be okay under your park rules. Would not be okay on lots 10, 11, 12, 13. How would you... Would be passive? No. Overnight camping? Probably not. That where that comes in is where the rules and regulations. Well, okay, maybe, I, I think it probably wouldn't be, but let's say you come up with a use that truly is not passive. Right now, if someone wants to, when, when the Boy Scouts write their letter every year to have a sleepover in the woods, right. we determine what areas they should, you know, they, they recommend where they want to go, but we determine where they go. And when we create the new rules and regulations, there will be steps, there'll be things in there that for those particular properties, if someone asks to use it, they may have a different requirement. So you'll, ha you'll still have them differentiated. There, the for these, for mm -hmm. these, there would be probably more limitations. Yeah. For example, we would allow a sleepover near Split Rock. We would not in the Jew property. Yeah. 
So we think we have the opportunity, and that's why we're waiting to see what happens here, then to go back and say, okay, we've got some unique situations. We've got to create rules and regs. What do we want to do here, and what makes the most sense? What makes the most sense that we can govern it, yet the public can maximize the better parts of it for whatever it is that they want to do. So the, the pieces on the bottom, the reservoir, which was, was, is an important topic. I actually, in the beginning of the process, really was pretty all in that I thought the res reservoir should be part of this potential new park along with the other piece of property, which is labeled as number 15, where the parking lot is, and then there's a very, very steep slope above the parking lot, okay? This whole thing is 15? That's, that's Macy. No, this whole thing is 17, 18, oh. and 19. This is Macy Park. 15 is, 15 is really... That's 15. What is 16? 16 is over here. That was a different discussion. Oh, that that's, a, that's county property up here. Oh, we'll get to that shortly. Okay. Yeah, we'll get to that shortly. Okay. And then 17, 18, and 19, which is, is Mesa Park. Okay. So on, on, on the reservoir, if we include the reservoir in this park, if there's ever a situation, it would be a pretty serious situation, you know, close to maybe... You know, I want Armageddon. to use the word catastrophic, but Armageddon. Really, really bad. It doesn't tell you that. But <laughs> yeah. if, let's say the water department, for whatever reason, had to put a new building on the south side of the reservoir, or had to put some new pipes in, or whatever. Based on the definition of parkland, they would be in. They would be alienating parkland. So we'd be going against our own our own wishes, if you will. So we felt leaving those two pieces of parcel alone, understanding that if someone's using the reservoir for the wrong reason, our rules and regs would govern how that gets dealt with. So we're talking 14 and 15. We're talking, we're yes. talking actually for, for yeah. four, 14 through 19. Okay. But right. 14 and 15 in particular, because I think we all view the reservoir and, and the court and then the other piece of the reservoir as <clears throat> you, you can make a real good argument that the parking lot should be part of the park. But the parking lot makes up such a small piece of, of number 15 that to dedicate that whole parcel to the park, again, just would not have made sense. And we didn't, you know, Larry did a really good job of explaining the, the difficulty we would be putting ourselves in. And again, like with um, Worthington Farms, because we have the ability to govern this park with the rules we're going to establish, nothing will happen at the reservoir that's in violation of that. It just means in a catastrophe, if the water department or the village has to take action to do something with the reservoir, that we won't be alienating it as parkland. But we, given the topography and the location, why would parcel 15 be used for anything? Outside of the parking lot, it wouldn't. Yeah, that's what I mean. Basically, yeah, you're right. Well, it's not all steep. It's some of it's flat. There is a there is a path at the top. Yeah, I understand that. But it, right. but, it's, but but it is limited. You know, it is limited. So I'm not sure. I, mean, I understand the argument of trying to keep uh, uh, alienation of, uh, from emergency use of the uh, reservoir, but uh, there are there is a if I'm not mistaken there's some pipe or drain. There's already a tie line. There's a tie that line runs that through comes 15. through uh, that, that hilly area. Right through 15. Through 15. From from the other set, from the other water tank on Mountain Road down to this facility here we already have utilities that run through this area. It you know to us it made sense not to. But doesn't it also run through the yellow area then? Well sure. But to us, it made sense not to this specifically this area in and around the reservoir, not to formally dedicate it, but still manage it as part of the park, right. part of the woods. Well said. And then uh, 16 is the county property, which so Larry that, pointed out. So that's up here. So it's part of the Westwood acquisition, but that's the one that the county actually purchased. And and we're already responsible for. It. You know, that was part of the agreement. So and I believe that's the 300 acre piece, if I'm not mistaken. That piece? Yeah. No, no. That, no. No. Not the 300. No, no. that's 300. <laughs> that, yeah, that's that's about 12. It's about 12. Yeah. Right. So yeah. The, and, and then the last three, which I think are self-explanatory, are the are the Macy, Macy Park properties. The three. This is the compost. Yeah. Okay. 
So we, the compost site is not a separate parcel. It, it, it's kind of a, a blob that extends over a couple of different parcels. Um, you know, the, the compost site would need to be um, like we did with Scenic Hudson and their conservation easement on number 10. Um, the compost site would need to be carved out of any formal parkland dedication because the use in and of itself is probably considered a, an alienation of parkland. Right. Certainly an alienation of the of the conservation easement on 10. Um, but it's an existing use, and, and we call it the compost site. It's actually a transfer site. We, we don't compost there anymore. Yeah. That word just stuck with it. Yeah. So the organic or organic waste still is sometimes stored and transported and out. Again. Yes. It's on 10 now. That's it's on 10. It's partially. Here's the line. That's that's 10. That's so three. part sunrise and part sun. Right. Okay. And this is not current. Number three is not currently parkland. Number yeah. 10 is covered by the conservation yeah, easement. We did so. a car box, Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, I'm simplifying it for you. I think it would be great to make this be known as the Irvington Park. And again, the name is still something that you know you guys can can, can deal with. But um, it's all woods. You're responsible for it. You're responsible to maintain it. You're responsible to look over it. And you know whether you know, the ones that are clearly not needed to be put in are there, but the other 13, you know allow you to have a a unified you know park which again i think the public would, would really like to have so right now just um what this will accomplish is making clear and consistent regulations for the entire track right. make it one contiguous if you will park with the possible exception of nine which is sitting over here all by itself um and be able to what will change in terms of usage well, uh, that'll depend on what the final rules and recommendations are. Right now, technically, the field point piece of property, which was dedicated as a park, is a village park, which means there are no dogs allowed in it. That's five. Which, right, okay. which, which no yeah. one that's my <laughs> dealt with. Five, or five. Five, is five is field point. No one who looks at the field point property Thinks keeping dogs out of there make it's not even that's something we're going to do. So you know you're going to have rules that say dogs are allowed. I'm assuming the rule will be dogs are allowed on leash in the Irvington Woods Park, which would encompass all everything. The, the the issue from the rules side, and I, I'm not trying to make it more complicated than it needs to be. From from a rules standpoint, we have rules that govern uh, you know four or five of our named parks. This is not a named park in our regulations. It falls under the category of other, which have rules that aren't really what is in effect. <laughs> you know, it is what's really and happening out there. They're consistent among the parcels, even though they're contiguous. Yeah, uh, well, but they're not. They're not anything. They all fall under another category. So it's just, it's it's never been a named park, and or at least the regulations don't reflect it as a named <clears> park. So we have regulations for Cedar Hudson, and you all know we have re regulations for Matheson and Memorial and. Maybe even Hastings, but we we don't have it for um, for the Irvington Woods Park or whatever it's called. Now, would they per a person using this walking dogless or with dog or whatever know when they went from one parcel to another? Right? Not at all, right? Not likely. No, that, that's what that'll so there's be. There's no a bit. signage or no way to differentiate. You're just walking in the woods. Outside of, of potentially changes to mapping that we have, I, I you you wouldn't know. Okay. You just would. So I understand about the parking lot, and, but is this all has to be included in that because it came as a piece, or is or is there some reason why, why or why not this part of this whole Macy can't be the park as well? Yeah, it's, because for, it's first of all, we don't we don't own it's not ours. we don't it's own Macy Park. That's owned by the hard, county, but we are required. Country. Right, but we are required to manage. Ah, okay. All right. So, so there's no formal action that we will be taking on that parcel. We're not allowed to. We can't. It's not ours. Okay. So <laughs> it's belonged by the county. Belongs to the county. Where does the county, the county, 
is responsible for all of this, including no, the rest line, of no. I, I, I didn't line. Get okay, he didn't make a line there. So no, 16, no. 17, and 18 and 19 are counted. 16 is here. Yeah. Oh, and then 18 that. and 19 are here, <clears throat> right up to this line right here, roughly. So when you're in Ardsley and you're in what they call Macy Park, that's a different. That's a different, different part Macy of Park. Macy Park. Yeah. Macy Park is huge with flooded soccer fields. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Right. The the piece of property that is um, uh, within the Westwood area, the northern part, that will get that will like everything up there get enormous usage, as it already does. So I mean that's you know, it's just the, the it. it very different than the Macy Park part of the of the parcels, you know. The, the the north part, from field point up, is really where the action is, if you will. You know, the goal looking at this was number one, protection of land, maximizing use, maintaining. Those are the three things, the three basic things, and, and, and in that order, you know, you know, we had we felt tremendous responsibility to make sure that we didn't leave doors open where anyone would think that we weren't doing our most to protect that all of this land because that that's primary and then secondly you know what can we do and to make sure that our rules make it safe for people and yet the most people in the community and from all over will come to get to appreciate this just amazing resource that we're lucky enough to so have. So the county said to us, okay, you can use it, you can maintain it, it's yours, kind of, it's really ours, but right. you're like renting it or have control of it. Um, yeah, I mean, it, they at some point say, you know what? No, it's a little, it's a little, no, 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 well, um, when the county purchased this property with $3 million, um, we entered into an intermunicipal agreement with with the county, and part of the intermunicipal agreement, right? Part of the intermunicipal agreement was to build a nature center, which we did. <clears throat> it was a little longer than we envisioned, but we did it. And uh, the, the other part of the agreement was to manage the county parkland that they just purchased, as well as the lands that are considered Macy Park in Irvington. That was all part of the same. So we manage it. We're responsible for so it. So the village. So, do the villages' park rules apply to them? We we see no reason why they wouldn't. Okay. But I mean, yeah, the statute's not written yet. They they can't no, expect no. us to take care of it without being able the to implement the, the rules for it. So I'm just trying to get a sense of that. Yeah. And there's you know there's 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 there are limitations written into the intermunicipal agreement about residency requirements, things like that. We can't we can't. Right. We could just say properties right. and residents only, of course. So. Um, but anyway, that. But beyond that, we don't see why there's any reason why we can't manage it in the way we need to manage it. Would there be any residency restrictions on any parts of this? No. no. Okay, there'll be certain no. use. The only time, rights. the only, the only area where that comes into play at all is um, for use of the nature center because it, based on rentals or something like that. There, you know, again, just the case it's out there. There's been not zero discussion of limiting who this park would be available to. We would be in violation of the county properties, and I believe also the two scenic Hudson's, yeah. if we tried to do it. But no one's that's that's still in it. That's not what the goal is. How do you control, how do, how do you border the woods? No, you, 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 you would be looking at. Yeah, that'd be great. Mexico, so, so you're probably looking at 60 percent. So I have, a, yeah. I have two questions. Uh, what about the area across across Cyrus Field where the police shooting range is. Is that what is that land? Um, it's actually it's actually part of parcel fifty nine fifty two um, which is the it also includes the parking lot, that sloped hill we discussed, and then you cross the street and that's all part of it. We did not look at that nor did we have any desire to make that part of our conversation. Why is that? We, we think it's just way too complicated for us. And again, it's almost looked at as a separate piece of, of property. How can I, how, how could we sit here and tell you we're going to be designing 
trails and pathways and encourage people to come and how does it how do you manage the gun range in that property in that? Okay. So what is it what is it legal it's part of parcel fifteen? Yes. Yep. So what's the legal protection of it right now? I mean what 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 is it? It's just village, village property, yep. We do not intend to go over and tell the police to stop shooting. You know, until you said that, I was about that as it was part of that same parcel. I was going to argue that why aren't we protecting more of the uh, stuff to the east of the reservoir and just carve the parking lot out? But yeah, it was it. Now I don't know if it makes any sense. It got complicated. You know, again, like I said, first of all, you know, just so you do know, um, we have spent a lot of time. That's this is the alienation of parkland. And just to show you how special I feel, this is my autograph Chet Kerr version of his study. <laughs> I made Chet autograph it at one of the meetings because I have spent much time with it. And in all honesty, wouldn't be at this point with as much confidence as I have in what we've done without the work that Chef had done for us. And and again, with, without Larry's help. And, and again, the support from RPAC in the woods. You know, there, we heard a lot of wild things that were out there. Like we were trying to, you know, there's these hidden agendas for fields and um, the activity areas and you know, again, I, I'm just telling you, it comes down to th those three things, you know, to protect, to maximize, and to maintain. That's what we're trying to do. So how will this help us maximize the use? How will it get to Well, well we're, again, you're not going to be having people walk their dogs on field point when they're not supposed to. You're going to make it one. So the rules you develop take care of all of it. Okay. So it becomes easier. So it's not saying, well, this piece of property, I'm allowed to have dogs, and this one, I'm not. The rules will govern all of it. Yes, there will be some. The, the, the consistency. There will be, there'll be a, the ability to be much more consistent. There's no question. Did the scenic Hudson pieces ever um, say they would be strict dog there? No. no. Well, and, and no, in considering of their 25 pieces of property, the only one that they have where dogs aren't allowed is Scenic Hudson Park. Uh, I don't think they would uh, have anything to say about that. Thanks, I probably couldn't have a dog one, but well, yeah, I would think that would be actually, but you can walk dogs. There, and there's no intention of revisiting the dog park up in the woods either. <laughs> now, you refer a, a bunch of these, but three of them, four of them, as Hermit's Grave. I know about Hermit's Grave. But did, did the ownership of this have something to do with who owned it at the time? Why are they all called that? Did they, where did they come from? Well, I, so six, seven, and eight. Well, I, um, okay, I imagine Chad probably knows, oh. but um, <laughs> in fact, I, I mean, don't know. Six seven, like six, seven, six, seven, and eight, I don't know the history of. Six, Thir seven, thirteen, eight. I do know the history of because we acquired it in the, last, 13. In the last 15 years. Right. Thirteen, I, I yeah. know in the last right. 15 years we acquired. So, you know, that's a, that was a village acquisition and it does have some restrictions in terms of open space. Um, six, seven, and eight, I'm not exactly sure. But we, ask Chet sure. for one, one line, like, why, where did we get it from? So, here, this is the kind of collectively thought of as hermit graves. Okay. This 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 piece right here is what you acquired is called the dwelling or dweller dweller of property mm -hmm. that has a slight restriction as to be kept as open space. These three properties were separately owned by individuals, and when the Sawmill Parkway was built and this road was essentially shut down, the village either the village or the town foreclosed on these properties and they only made their way to the village. It was back in the 40s or 50s. So I, I again, in that book, we'll have a specific history of each one, but that's how they got to do with it. It's kind of like eminent domain, they kind of said. It was just foreclosure, it was tax foreclosure. Okay, they just paid the taxes. Because they were on a road to get to them. Exactly. Yes. You can have it. I'm not paying the taxes. They just disappeared. 
Okay, so. Okay. Worthington Farm, now I guess. <laughs> um, so do you want me to explain that one? How it got stuck out in the middle of nowhere? Yes. Sure. So this is the Worthington Farm area. Before the sawmill was put in place, the Worthington Farm extended over uh, here into Harsley. And when they built the sawmill, this portion of it got cut off from the rest of the farm. And again, this was also foreclosed on by, I think, the county or the town of the town. Yeah. They made the way to us. That's all. That's okay, at Worthington Street. Also. Yeah, that's what right. right, right, right. right. So what this seems to be the only controversial piece from what I gathered. So we think, so we, we think, we think everything else, we think inside the yellow, is without question a no-brainer. A no-brainer. Okay. Uh, so, I don't think. Uh, and I'll just point to the guy who did the work. Do you no, agree? And we that that's the, it's yeah. I I I'm one way to speak up, but well, I'm, 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 I'm just I'm asking. So, so we yellow. we wholly support what Joe is proposing about all the stuff within the yellow. And for reasons that I'm more than willing to explain, we fully support that this should be part of the park as well. There's very good positive reasons to make that part of the park now, and there's no reason not to do it. Um, so we support everything that Joe has said. We support, for reasons I'm willing to explain, keeping this not, designate this not as park plan right now to ensure that the, the village's ability to make it a drinking source if it has to. But we agree with Joe, it should be included in the woods conceptually and subject to the rules. And and frankly, the very fact it's a potential drinking source highlights, I think that should be part of the reason why it's not being part of the woods, just to highlight the importance of protecting the future. And what's the what's the downside of making this part of it? But well, the, that's why I put it in, because I don't I don't see a downside. Uh, because again, if you don't, and something happens there, technically we're still responsible. We have to enforce our rules. So if that's the case, bring it in. It's part of the park. If something happens where you develop a way in or something changes, you've already protected it. If someone decides they're trying to do something with it, you've given it an extra layer of protection. I'm not sure. Because I haven't heard the ball. I'm not sure I, I even know what Chet's ideas are on it. But again, there was no downside for us to do it because we're not going to, we're not changing anything about it right now. We're not trying to make access to it right now. But again, because we want the public to feel you are doing as much as you can to protect these woods. It's just one you just pull into the pile. But was there somebody objected to it? The fact that you. I did. There were, Larry. Larry. Okay. So what? what? Um, probably reasons that people won't find all that compelling. But my, my, the main thing is that it really, for all practical purposes, can't be included as part of the park in terms of access. Access. Or at least in the, in the published map. You know, I, w I would hate to see a published map with that parcel on it. Because there's no way to get to it. There's no way to get to it legally. Can't go. Oh, because they're crossing people's the property. Yeah. Right. Uh, okay. Right. So, so maybe that's more of my issue. But look, I, I'm. Uh, Is this county property out here? The, the salt. Yes. Salt yeah. yeah. But I'm. I'm a. I'm a practical person when it comes to this, and I see a parcel that's located next to a highway, and it's a municipal parcel, and that could be useful down the road. I don't know in what capacity. Probably. I don't know. Uh, whatever. I'm just. My point is, is that it's. Is there a different designation that would kind of? Um, well, if you don't make it, if you don't make it part of the park, it becomes number. It just goes down into the bottom group. Uh, it would be part of the woods, but not part of the park. And when you make so, maps of things, you would include it. Which would kind of negate. Well, no, I would mean that, would. that's my point. Right, so you're I, not, I, you're not really I have a problem with including it. I'm going to try to get there. <laughs> Which is why, you know, we're, we're kind of punted. We, you know, you, to not. We, we both had this conversation many times, and, you know, which, whichever direction or whichever way you guys feel fit with it, we'll, you know, we'll find a way to, 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 to make it work. But, but you know, Again, Larry, and I appreciate Larry's 
allowing us because that was the input that the committees and the people I worked with felt, and that's why we're at, we put it in there. But we fully, and everyone that's dealt with this understands that that may be a decision you decide to go in a different direction. Telegraphically, is it usable? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, is it just a, slow, a steep no. slope? It really isn't. It's very steep. Very steep. I, mean, I can bring up the topo if you want to see it. Yeah. But it could be a, a rock climbing pole. It's a rock park. If you it's could get to it. It's not fun to be down there that close to the Sawmill Parkway. Yeah. I'm sorry, what did you say? It's not fun to be at that. You know, no, it's a parkway and the throughway. Well, it kind of sounds like the ocean. Right there. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like, if you don't like that background noise of the cars going by, it's a nice place to be. Other than that, you know, uh, it's... So I thought Larry was saying you want to put the DPWs like that. Well, <laughs> in, in, you know, yeah. carved, out of a, <laughs> carved out of a cave. That's yeah, right. <laughs> I, I like that. Oh, look, I, I'm, I'm not. Good luck in the I'm not trying to advance any plans. I'm, I'm just suggesting that it, it has, it has little utility from a, from a, traditional park standpoint. I guess maybe if I lived right behind it, I'd be more opinionated. I, I'm, I'll give you that. But, um, I, I, like I said, I see a parcel next to a highway, and I don't see a park there. <laughs> We have I, I'm really concerned about the trespass, the necessity of trespass to access it, because once you designate it as a park, you know how can you have a park that people can't get to? Okay. Um, I drove. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I got to zoom in. <laughs> You could right. You could, you could use your drone. Which uh, drone? We. No, we're not going. It's a little Amazon. No, we are. Yeah, yes, we are. Yes, are. Yes, we are. Yes, next. No, I know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when I did the Compass Grave, I it seemed like it had gone so far. I was like, I wouldn't right. have yeah, the thought of going any further. Yeah. Already so. Those lines are very close together. Yeah. I guess you could just keep going and going. But people, no, I think I, how much do people I, go down I, here? Do they use this park? All the time. Yes. Really? Yeah. Yes. Okay. It's great hiking trails. It's great mountain biking trails. And the, the, the whole trail system? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Oh, maybe yeah. So it's like and last three we're off of each dog, right? Yeah, yeah I'm probably know. less down there, <laughs> but further more in the northern part. Of I mean, this is pretty steep getting down into there. No, it's not. Steep. No, it's a quite walk. It's a quite walk. Well, then yeah. I get lost. Then. I'm I'm standing this here. Is, this, is, here. Yeah, yeah, this will give you. A, this will give you a different look at it. We're in Worthington Park. Park. Right. No, it's in Worthington Park. Here's the reservoir. Okay. These are. This is the Macy Park. And as you can see, it looks much different when you're looking at it here than when you're looking the way it is here. Mm -hmm. And you can see how close it is to the actual Field Point Park and how close it is to the Hermit's Graves property. So it's, it, it really is. You can understand it better yeah. on this map than you can on this map. Okay. I'll take the short walk out there. Well, I'm sorry. It's just a guided tour. And what is that? It's a guided tour. Yeah, it was great. It's it's a high, you know, it takes some time. It's yeah. It's an hour parcel. So that's the widest point. Yeah. So, so who is this right in here? Uh, yeah, that, this parcel is right. Here? Is that, is that Zolo? That's the, that's the old Rivalson tax parcel. It's now owned by Lou Bruto, who owns this piece of property right here. And he's just redid a, there's a house here he's just redone, but this is all. Is that 58-1 you're talking about? No, 58-2. No. That's the Rivalson tax Okay. So, and that was, it's now owned by Lou, and he just redid the house right here. And does he have any uh, opinion of that? I'm willing to just tell you guys what I know about that parcel and my thoughts on it. I just didn't know if I can interject or not. I don't want to steal the joke's thunder. I, I have no thunder. <laughs> don't let me down. Yeah, I'd like to know. Okay. So, <clears throat> if I can, specifically dealing with the Worthington parcel and how it fits into this Rivalson parcel. Um, specifically, as I said, we think it should be designated as parkland. There's no reason not to do it. There's no change in status. There's no additional liability to the village. It's just, just it's still the village property, whatever. But we think there's really good reasons to do it. And first off, the fact that I agree that it's very steep and largely inaccessible at this point 
But one of the real reasons for doing all this is to preserve and protect this property as open space. And the fact that you say you're designated as parkland, that's the nomenclature that's used in the case law. But there's a lot of good reasons for just preserving open space for the environmental and the watershed parts of all that. And there's a controller's report from 2010 which specifically talks about the value of doing this. That parcel was included in the open space inventory that the village did. Yes, the village did back in 2001 or so. And therefore, under current ordinances, the village's public policy is to try to protect that property. And this is a good way of protecting that property. Wait, so if I can interrupt you. So it's already protected. No, it's not. It's not. It's just been designated. It's been designated. It's just a fee. It's an open fee. But it's been identified as an open space parcel. And that means that in future use, or if there was going to be something to be done with it, the village should take steps to protect it. And so we suggest that this is a good way of doing that. So you're suggesting do it proactively? Proactively, yes. Even though there's nothing that indicates any? Yeah, I don't think. Look, it is a very steep slope. It's landlocked. It's landlocked. There's no doubt about that. But that's not a reason not to protect open space. And again, I know we keep talking about designating this as parkland. And if there's a concern that Larry's concerned about people feeling they've got to wander up there, in fact, if you look at the Irvington Woods map, it's part of the woods map right now. That's part of the map. And one way of doing it would be to designate it formally as parkland, just to give it the added protection, which I think is a really good thing for the community. But say this is, make this area, call that the Irvington Woods, and not necessarily include this. But that would get that legal protection, which is very important. But you would not direct people to go up there and maybe change your Irvington Woods map to take it off. So it becomes like Pluto. No, but what it becomes, no, what it becomes, Pluto Woods, what it becomes is, again, we feel it's important for the village when there is existing open space to make sure it's protected. And that's a way of adding protection. The other thing I will say this is, this Riverson Tax property, which is in between. Why do you call it a tax property? That was what it was called for many years. It was owned by the tribe. That was the name of the company. It pays taxes. Well, that was the trust name. That was the name of the company. Oh, OK. If this is made parkland, and that's made parkland, and at some time in the future, either the village, or perhaps the land trust, or Blue Pluto himself, wanted to either sell or put a conservation easement on this property, the ability to do so is greatly enhanced if that is parkland and that's parkland. Because you're then making two parcels of parkland convenience. And so there is a future advantage to having this parkland as well, no matter what you might call it, you know, whether you call it part of the Irvington Reservoir, I don't know what parkland, whatever it is, but the fact it has that protection and it's been brought within the public trust, that enhances the village's ability to do something with it in the future, the Riverson Tax, this portion of the tax property, or even Blue Pluto's as well. Was there another owner in here? So, yes. No, that's it. So what it is, no, so you can see, what here's Connie's fire. OK, that's way bigger on this. Yeah, you can see it. It stretches up the mountain road, and it hooks all the way down here. OK, what can be done on that parcel now? I don't, but you can walk on it, but not much. So nothing can be built or developed or changed under its current status, is that correct? No, under its current status. Something's on the open space inventory, Jim. For instance, it has to get notice to the planning board that it's on the open space inventory map. And then that just means maybe you pay a little bit more attention to the development there. But it doesn't mean you can't develop it. That's right. That's right. The village isn't subject to that. It could be sold by the village. It's not subject to that. No, no, but that's what it means to be on the open space inventory. That's what it meant to be. I think that's correct. That's correct. It doesn't mean you can't build on it. So the village owns it, and the village wanted to do something. Right. You just, if it's open space, you could just look at it more clearly. Yeah, no. Right. You could, well, again, whether you could physically, there's no access to it really off Mountain Road. This is all private property. That could never, I think, realistically be where the need to have people just walk over this guy's door. No, no, I'm not. I never suggested that. That was a joke. We were, it's an internal joke. So if you look at the current Burlington wood map, 
What it shows is this is part of the Irvington Woods. That's all part of Irvington Woods. There is a pathway drawn across this parcel here, and there's actually a walking path that I've taken. You could do that. It's not really maintained or stuff like that. And again, it's over it's over county property in the summer. It's so like that right of way to the, the, the highway. Yeah, so, what, so what, what you'll see here, here, County, if you look right here, this property right there, if you look on the Irvington Woods map, there's a dotted line that goes like that from there to there. That's this is county property, and you're just you're kind of walking on a slope a little bit. Along the side there. So there is public access to that near parcel. Yeah, whether it's public access or just simply somebody marked the dash lane on a map, I don't know. But there, there's a trail in there. There's a trail. There's, there's a trail. A trail. Walk the trail, trail. But it is give you a and every now and then somebody goes in there with a chainsaw trail. and cuts right. it out. But do we, are we clearly saying that this, it is not necessary to walk over private property to get? Well, it's not necessary to walk over private property if you walk across okay. this county property there. But the county has not ever said. Hey, you guys can walk across. I don't know the answer to that. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, it's I don't, a right I don't to a highway. I'm not even sure how it made it on the original map, yeah. which was done, you know, with, but, but uh, if, if I can just go back. Contiguous truth establishes the right way. Yeah. If I can go back to it again, the whole reason we were doing the property was, was to protect this property. And this designating this as park, regardless of whether you bring it within the name of this park here or not, that protects that property. And that is an ad, it brings within the public trust doctrine. And I think that is, an, that is a good thing for the board to do. There's a lot of reasons to protect open space generally, whether or not it's successful, whether you think it's a normal park. And that's what we would, we believe would make sense here. Listen, it's fair, you, you do have to keep in mind that the more attention, the more we do, the more will be expected. You know, people aren't going to just, you know, there's going to be a lot of extra paying attention. I mean, we're responsible for it now, but when you bring this out and you dedicate this new area, just remember, it, it won't come without added cost to you for maintenance. Because the more people that use it, the more things that happen, the more we may have to go back to. Right now, our ability to get back there is very limited. I have the idea. This is where the village could have a goat park. <laughs> a what park? A goat, goat park. It's a long oh, so do you share? Do you guys share the same reservations about this? I'm, I'm just not sure. What about about Worthington? Yeah. No, I think I'm the only one that has reservations here. Did you just say you had reservations also? Well, you you mentioned something that you know kind of hit a chord when you you said that. You know, if it's there, we're, we're, and it's publicized as being the park, and people try to get to it, and we're saying it's dangerous at the same time, you know, that, that you're kind of opening. I, I think, I still think it should be in there and protected. I think what might have to come with it is like the parcels that we have some rules, specific rules we have to have for, that may have to have its own special set of rules. And so can I just say this, Jen? That, that we uh, we strongly feel that as open space it should be protected and whether again whether or not you call it part of the park that you're creating here or not and therefore kind of keep it off people's radar screen i care less about that what i care about is taking existing village open space that is wooded area that has an environmentally sensitive value to it and protect it. i think the thing i take from this that and aside from, I think, again, simplifying it, it would be so cool to make this a park. I just believe that, yeah. okay? Um, the fact that our path, the Woods Committee, Chet's group, residents, I think all support the concept we put out in front of you. That, that says a lot, yeah. you know, yeah. that, that, that we all, and, and I, think, I think, again, the protection and, and use and maintenance. It, it, I keep coming back to it, but that's what it should be about. And, and there are people who, again, think we have plans to come to you to do all these types of development. And this will really help say, 
No, it's not an area. We have more important things to be dealing with. This is a park where it's going to stay a park. Yeah, uh, let me be clear. I completely support everything you've said with the rest of it. The only question. Yeah, and, and, and I, I don't have a good answer I think, for you. I think we have all the information we need. Yeah. It's just kind of yeah. deciding now. I think we should call it Larry's Reservation. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's fine. Now you know my motives. So, so in all seriousness, I think what, what um, what I'm taking away from all this is that this is probably less about it's less in the purview of the Recreation and Parks Advisory Committee and more in your purview yes. because you're not you're not being pushed to turn this into a park with a capital P. Right. You're, you're being pushed to Correct. preserve this and make sure that it stays preserved going forward. Yes, that's and that's not a recreation question necessarily. It's an open space question and. Yeah. A future potential use question, and so that's what you Correct. have to consider. I agree, and I think we've heard. Most but the rest of it's all. Yeah, I think we're all. You're all in agreement on. So simultaneously, at the same time, you could say, we could say, or we could decide that this in this yellow is the park, and this gets a certain status to be protected, but isn't in the yeah, park. Go in the park. So you could do category. those two things simultaneously, and thus avoid this whole idea of. I mean, yeah, I, I'm, not, I'm not crazy about the fact uh, yeah, that you think, really can't get to it. Anyway. I think we can look at it as a completely separate issue. Yeah, we right. just want to preserve this and not have it part of this, exactly. Right, right. okay. I, 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 so can, can I just make one other thing clear from our point of view, that, and I don't want to overly complicate this, but when we first came to the board and we were talking about this northern area, we also an advocate for having to be designated as passive parkland. And I realize right. that, that is something right. that, and, and we continue to believe both that is consistent with its use, it's actually required under the village's agreements. There's a court order that says part of that has to be only passive parkland. And, and for all the reasons that we outlined before, and I'm more the one to outline again in, a, in kind of a, a letter to the board, we feel strongly Going to your question about how do you figure out the I got to interrupt because I want to make sure yeah, we're I, clear I, I, yeah. You can go back to your point. Our PAC and the Woods people who were in attendance do not feel the word passive should be used in any of this. We feel that calling it a park is protection enough for, for the village and that passive opens up other doors which could be problematic as to how you define it and even though there may be some definitions that are used in some areas you will get I'll just throw one thing at you I can line up this room and on this side of the room put people who tell you that biking is passive and put that side of the room and people will tell you that biking destroys the woods okay so the word passive to us is an unnecessary and potentially problematic word. Parkland, in our view, is all you need. And enough, and I think Marianne even pointed out that in the, in, in the document that Chet's referring to, if you go through it, passive isn't used every single time. It was used in certain parts, but it wasn't yeah. continuous. We've seen it Right. There, 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 there were times, it, but, so I, I think you could use those words the way you want to use them, but, but we are not in any way in favor of you using the word passive on any of this land. But you are. We you are, are. And, 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 and I will more than willing to summarize again in, in written form everybody why. But we also just want to point out another thing that we, going back to your question about how do you determine more broadly, how to use all this stuff, how to use the woods, given the different natures of it. Uh, separately, we think that some the village should, in the future, consider doing what Hastings is doing, and that is doing a an assessment of the woods. They got a state grant under the DEC to do that assessment. That's going on right now in the hillside woods, and they're hoping to come out of that with a better understanding how to use it and to fit Joe's request, you know, how do you maximize use of it? And you know, where is it where is it to be protected or not? And so that's another thing that we think is a good thing for the board, not necessarily as part of designating it as a part, but thinking future about how do you make sure it's properly being used is a good idea. So whose definition of passive applies? Is it a state term? Where, where so does that, if you used it or didn't well, use it? So, yeah, so, sometimes it says it has to be 
passive park land and can only sometimes it's specified. It just it's it's not a term that it's has any definition. Term, right, right. No, so it doesn't have any definition. Sometimes it's defined if they say passive and you can only do this, this, and this. Sometimes it does not it so has to be a, a connection when you use yeah. the word to what you're Putting in that. So, so when we make the rules and regulations, you know, from advice from everybody about the uses of the park, we decide. Yeah, like what, I think it was Joe. Are. Was it, Joe? Were you just the one who said that some people say biking is passive, right. others not? So you know, but, but, your but, biking but, is but you could passive. you could right. you could define it. I mean, right. and you know, and, yeah, it would have to be reasonable. Changing your rules is easy for you to do by a local law. What Chad is encouraging you to do is to do something that is less easy for future preservation. So that's the difference. Right, well, I, I, I but think I understand. We, we, look, we did, I mean, look, so you know what happened after the last time we met here at a work session mm -hmm. is the conversation that night was that the board was not particularly interested in, in pursuing the passive designation. They were interested in making sure these lands were protected right. as park land, and that's what the, right. and that, so that's what RPAC worked on. Um, we're not suggesting we reopen it, but Chet wants you to reopen it, and that's, that's, that's a debate. So, I just want to reopen it. It's not easy to advocate. Yeah, no, no. It, so I no, that was clear. a review of what that was, right. which I was trying to right. And you have, because you, you clearly use the word, you can tell us, again, you have told us, and you provide us with a lot of information. Right. Right. I, I will say this, that there are current laws passed by this village, specifically zoning, the 1989 zoning law, that deals with the watershed that requires that what before anything can change in that watershed, if the and I've got the language here, it has to be for consistent with passive use. So that language has been used by the village in other terms. When the village I'm made sure what it means. <laughs> when the village village made this part of the parcel, it originally said it had to be just for passive use. So it has been something that the village that's that has changed slightly. But that is something the village has done before. There is a specific definition in the intermunicipal agreement the village has with the county that specifies what that is. So again, I, I, you know, I, I just want to be very clear our position on that issue. I think. I'm just trying to imagine something that is recreational, protecting it as basic open space, that is recreation, Passive. Baseball field. Well, baseball field. Ah, okay. Baseball field. Well, you have to, to make the, the field. And the activity that happens on the field. Yeah, so, <laughs> so, 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 if you played wiffle ball in the woods, there would be a. Well, let's say soccer field. So yeah, right, right, right. That would not be. We're going to put the wiffle ball field at Worthington Farm. Everything on hill. Everything's on hill. Listen, you guys, well, I, 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 listen, I, first of all, I have drones. Drones. You're not know, leaving yet. Yeah. You're not up. Well, on this, uh, again, I, I want. I think we've met what you asked us to do. I know you have some decisions to make. Um, you know, we're comfortable. We gave you a lot to think about. Yep. We appreciate all the input we got from everyone. I'm, I'm extremely grateful to Larry for his patience, making sure <laughs> I, did nice this, I did this in a way that, you know, was following what you had set. I appreciate the public for all they did to help with it. And, and, and I don't think we lose here, you know, whatever your decision is. It's a lot of Great. We appreciate all the, the hard work on this. It's, uh, I think for some of you it might be a little bit of a labor of love, but um, it's, uh, I mean, I also find the history really interesting, like, finding out about where it takes marks. So we revisit this in some way, shape, or form. What's the next step? What is the next step? We, we, will, we will go through the recommendation and develop yeah. Either a, whatever the mechanism is, whether it's a resolution or a local law, whatever the, the process is to designate the parcels that need to be designated as parkland, we'll come up with that in, in detail and turn it into something you can act on. With a map? Well, yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll try to key it. <laughs> Jeez, you took everything. Uh, and is, and is, is the consensus that this would not be included? I didn't get all I don't even know where I, I, I we, we can, we can uh, yes, you can think okay. about it. All right. That's the easiest yeah. thing to do. I'm, you know, I think dedicating a park lamp but not making it a part of park is yeah, yeah, that's wrong meaning as well. That's probably the taking off the map. The only thing is I think the map. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing I've been talking the only thing that I think that is of interest that there is a maintained trail that's on 
Well, I remember, if you do this, we want, we're going to need to redo all of our maps. So the opportunity will be there to make the change when we need to do it. So right now, we've been sitting on a lot of stuff until we see what direction you're going to go with this. This will start a lot of balls rolling down the hill, if you will. The trail is not maintained by us. I think more people yeah, who's who's talking about this. Oh, God knows. It's a park. But there's like, somebody out there with a the chainsaw yeah. maintaining that train. The Worthington's ancestors. The Worthington ancestors. Yeah. Yeah. Worthington yeah. ancestors are. We have on videotape one of the equipment boxes in Cedar Cutson Park moving on its own. I did see that. Yeah. So right. there are ghosts around. Yeah. Oops, sorry. I saw it so he could tell no, you. No, I, I have an open mind. <laughs> 300 pound equipment box moves the weight from the wall of the bathrooms. Did it go back? Nope. No. Well, Scott, I mean, I think it's going to go back. Okay. And I don't believe in that at all. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, number five. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Where, thank you. Chad, thank you again. Thank you, John. I appreciate the hard work. Like the thank you. Uh, so the drones. The, the drone issue has been really a difficult one for us. We had talked about it well over a year ago. We're lucky enough to have two attorneys on our pack, Matt Spencer and uh, Michael Smith, who I know most of you know, and fine gentlemen and great guys. And, and, you know, with Rick and I trying to push, you know, to come up with something, yeah, we just could not come up with anything. Um, Michael Smith attended a lawyer's conference Let me know. and left there more confused about drones. I, I did one on one uh, okay. for municipal officials. Yeah. I literally do less than when I was just Googling myself. My son took a course at Albany last year, and his professor told him, this was in May, he said, when you come, when we come back to school in the fall, my curriculum will be totally different because every day something changes with this. So here's where we are with it right now. We're honest enough to say to you, we don't know what to do because it, there, there's a problem. But we had a dangerous situation on July 4th. On July 4th, there was a drone that was somewhere 20 to 50 feet above our heads, flying on the water side of the park, back and forth between where we were set up with the fireworks and the fire department and going back deep into the crowd. And the police, according to the chief, said there was no action they could take. The park was packed at this time. Had that drone fallen, someone would have gotten hurt. Um, and, and we worry about that. We've had drones fly back and forth in Cena Cutson Park over the field while people are playing. You could also, you know, I think the first time drones actually became something we were worried about, if I'm not mistaken, you saw one near the, the uh, well, near close to the tracks, which- No, I saw the video you? online. Okay. <laughs> so, that's what, so it was something- Chasing the train down the so, track. <laughs> we don't know where to go with it, but here's what we're asking you to do right now until Marianne and, and the police department we, we would like drones banned from flying on any village park and to not be allowed to launch or uh, land in any of the parks because we, 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 don't, we don't even know how to deal with that. We talked to the chief again about it prior to um, Rocktoberfest and we asked what would happen if we had a drone issue. He said, there's nothing I can do. Well, there's nothing he can do. There's certainly nothing rec people can do. And, and I'm not exaggerating, and Rick, you were with me, right? I mean, it was mocking us, basically, <laughs> sitting above us, you know, and Officer Tulin actually looked up at it and did this, and it turned and, and left. But, you know, that thing came down. I mean, it wasn't a, and this wasn't a, you know, a little thing like this. This was a, a big drone, and, and someone would have got hurt. We don't know where it was being flown from. I still think it was from within the park, but I couldn't tell you that. because I was dealing with my own problems because we were within a half an hour of the show when all this was happening. I can, I can tell you one thing I did learn from all of my Googling as well as the online thing. Most of the, the laws I've seen that they've allowed, you have to, it has to be within the visual sight of it. So you can't just like fly away. And, you know, that's, that's one of the rules that, that the, you know, the uh, FAA is not shot down. But in a park, right, in a park, when people aren't aware it's above them, you know, I mean, <laughs> but there's a halfway point that I keep thinking about is that, you know, the park, like, uh, 
to say a blanket of all the parks to me is a problem because where does anyone in the village then validly fly these things? On section nine. I mean, I understand the limitations during public events that you really have a crowd, a safety issue. But then again, it seems like I'd rather have them flying at Madison Park during the day, let's say, than flying down, you know, River Road or Harriman Road where, you know, you've got a lot more other issues. Well, before we can take a position on it, I think as a department, someone has to tell us what is the consequence and what happens when someone is flying it where we feel or staff feels it's 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 problematic. Can I just so, say, I actually have, you could, and I, because I, I, I had said to draft law more than a year ago right. around about this. And I feel comfortable that if you wanted to, and I'm not sure that all the, all the board agrees, that you could ban from any public spaces, not even the park, you could do it over village property, ban them being washed, landed, or flown over. And, and, and that, that would be a, um, a, a valid restriction. Over, over village property, meaning village buildings or village easements? Well, I, I, you probably want to do it over parks and uh, uh, you might want to, I don't know if you have other municipal properties, but that's the part you want to. Because everybody's saying, oh, you can't do it. The truth is that you, you, you can, um, from all I can see. And there, everybody says it changes every day. It does. The law has been really very static on this. It's, it's, it's not um, you can't do it, it's do you want to do it. No, it's no, but people, yeah, no, no, no. I said, yeah, okay. if you want, yeah, if you, if you want. You want. You, you, you may there's not want steps to. you have to take yeah. to be able no, to you, well, you can't just buy one and go <laughs> and fly it down in the park. Well, no, you, no, I'm talking about banning it. That's, yeah, right. but no, that's right. Right now, if you are flying one, there are rules. Yes. But, I mean, that's not going to be very easy for it. That police department's not going to be so, no, it's whatever it's, the it's, FAA, it's, and that's like too there much. There is a app, out there for the police department, which is what the city does a lot. Is they, if they think you're creating public danger, they just give you right. It's just reckless endangerment. And you yeah, yeah. Just, so that's so we have other laws that say you can't it, do To me, that's an easy, you know, so if we, you know, want to worry about a 4th of July or Oktoberfest, I think that's, you know, that's almost, the, you know, and the, the funny thing is, is that so the case law, and it's the New York, there's an NYU law professor who says they can charge you with that. You might get out of it if you go to court. But you know, obviously yeah, the penalty is that you're paying all the fees. Yeah. But actually, the, F the FAA regulations specifically say about them that you can't operate a small unmanned aircraft over a human being unless that human being is protected. I mean, so there are laws that permit, but but that's on that's under the the, the, the federal law. It's one of the laws that you cannot fly them within a certain distance from airports. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's there yes. So is a heliport an airport? Because one of the people, one of the conversations with us is that there are two in Rockland County, which would be, I think it was five miles of what we were told. Yeah, but the, 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 pro the problem is, Joe, I mean, if, if you want to regulate them, my regulate, my suggestion is that you come up with a local regulation. It's very difficult. And that's what we're asking. For, yeah. And, and, it's and, very difficult I agree. for the police I, to, to, to apply yeah, that. I, I, think, I, think the, I think the middle ground that kind of covers what Mark does is you have to have it approved by the clerk or the, the recreation department. Because you think about it, there are there are people that never what's his name that there's a guy who Paul. does it with Paul yeah so when he does he it, does it the right he way. does it the right way yes. so to me if, if you know we want to say unless you have a permit or something uh, which basically pre approval that hey I want to I want to fly my drone Saturday well Saturday is Oktoberfest you can't um, but you know Saturday December thirteenth. I don't think anyone would even know you went, you know, so I think that that might be, it's a little more complicated because it adds a step, but I think it kind of covers some of what you're talking no, that's about. That's what I was thinking, permit uh, for use. Yeah. Yeah. Permit for, for use. use. Each time. Yes, you have to. Or conceivably, you could block it up and here's a calendar when I'm like, yeah, here's, here's the seven days I want to fly it next month. Yeah, yeah. something. We want to use it to chase the geese. That's fine. Well, that's exactly right. Yeah. That would work. Listen, don't think we haven't thought about it, but 
but but again, on the Fourth of July. No, but that's yeah. that's the thing. That's, I'm, I'm telling you, I felt we had an unsafe situation. So, so yeah. in this, I agree. In this possible proposed law that we're fiddling around with, wouldn't you black out all these groupings like Fourth of July, October Fest, yes. other major days? And then you say if we have nobody, to nobody can do that on those days. Well, well I think what the they're suggesting is something different. Well, I, I know. But that you also. There's two ways to do it. Yeah. One is to say you can do it, but not on these days. The other is, is, is to say you have to apply you for a permit to, to do it. And then, that you, the then you, I mean, you don't give a permit if it's graduation. Or but I guess, yeah, yeah. where I was saying, yeah. when the permit becomes specific exclusion, you, you know, you no, can apply for a permit, but that permit would not allow you to apply for a permit. No, 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 they're talking about a permit for each use. Oh, well, so I see. So you want to use it on Saturday. I still haven't finished studying pollinator stuff, and now you want me to study the drones. So, so, so think of it this way. I mean, I'm thinking about how much, um, you're, you know, you guys, you're kind of throwing out a possibility, and I, I'm wondering how much administrative task this creates. I mean, you're creating a layer of you got to do this. Just uh, think, think this way through. You, as an individual, apply to be um, an approved user by what you say and what I don't know, what training you have or what you sign or whatever. And then there are certain blacked out days of which there can be added to that schedule, as you know certain things are. Maybe you say it's always on, you know, Saturday after two in the parks and certain, I don't know, what you do. But then it's not as administratively dense as um, having each time, each person. It's a little less control, but it's still a lot more control than what you have now. Right, that's yeah. what I was trying to get. Yeah. So you can black out, you can require a permit, but you can start out by blacking out certain dates, so you don't have to deal with requests for those. So, no, that's different than what it's Connie said, different. I think, because Connie's saying, if I understand, you yeah. don't have to go for a permit at all. First, so. you do go for a permit, you as an individual. Oh, just as say, yes. as yes. I am. Go in, yeah. I, I, Brian Smith applying for that. Yeah. 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 And then you uh, can you can apply it at the times and places that are designated in our law. But you don't have to come in every time. Maybe in the next year you do. Yeah, I, I, because so, on a di on a daily or each occasion thing, uh, you know. You'd have even more work for my staff. And, no, all right, so I know you want to. Can I? Can I just? Um, yeah. I, um, I just want to dial it back a little bit because I think the the main goal of what I wanted to get out of tonight is to understand what direction the board wanted to go with this. Not the specifics yeah, necessarily, right. because obviously specifics. There's a lot of variables here. Um, and things we don't know about, maybe, or we have to research. But um, it sounds to me like the board is doesn't want to just do a, a blanket ban. I don't. Does well, that sound right? Would, but I don't think that's right. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, no. I mean, okay. I, like I said, I'd rather so, have the stuff flying in the park on safe days rather than flying right. just so that's right. In the so that's the summary. The summary is you you would like to allow it, but only on. Safe days. By Whatever safe that, people. <laughs> by, safe, by safe people. Whatever that mechanism is, we'll figure out what the right mechanism is to do that and how we can legally do it correctly and whatever. But that's Amazon's going to be delivering. Yeah. And Revenge Barbecue is going to be delivering ribs by. <laughs> they're going to. Well, they better have their permit. Do a favor. So. <laughs> to your own. No, it's not. What do you need? I mean, I have no, I really don't have a sense of, well, well first of all, whether you, whether you want a permit for each use of it or whether you want a permit with blackout dates or... Well, but I think we, well, I think we have to maybe internally give that a little bit of thought, okay. you know, as to well, what works. Well, you said, works. am I ready? I'm not okay. ready. No, so, I'm not ready to write something. I need more. I, I agree. Yeah. Can we carry extra uh, liability once we start allowing people to fly it over the parks? Should we see maybe if um, um, Nimer or Spain 
have had situations in other communities that they service where they can let us know if something's worked. That's an interesting. I've talked to him. I read their article. It was very helpful. Yeah, and I called. I talked to Wade today just because that article was from a company. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he had something contradictory in it, but but, anyway, but he 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 he's very comfortable with you can regulate it. Yeah. You know. Right. And, yeah, yeah. Well, that's just good to know. Yeah, that is good to know. Good to know. Yeah, I know. Everybody yes. acts like you can't. Oh, this is, um, you know, um, uh, just tell me what we've been regulation. told. Yeah. Well, it's well, wrong. Yeah, I think there is a preclusion, but it only happens at certain. Oh, yeah. Other, yeah. Feet or right, exactly. So then it starts to get complicated, which is why people write it off. No, interestingly, the only, <laughs> the only. Um, Municipality in Westchester County that that, that has um, a law is Lewisboro. Is where? Lewisboro. Oh, what is yeah, it? it isn't. And then um, actually, Chatham Township had a pretty good one. What, what's Lewisboro? They're banned in all national parks. I do know that. I do know that. Yep. Yeah, they're banned in all national parks. Yeah, national parks in much of DC, much of the yeah. DC area. Um, it's an airport. Here, here's what Lewisboro is. Uh, no person shall launch the land. I, oh, just by the way, are no. you talking about um, just drones or what about remote control airplanes? Yeah, RCs and those two. Yeah. Okay. So no person shall launch the land in the airborne remote control vehicles, including but not limited to model airplanes. Cool. Yeah. Sorry. No person shall launch or land any airborne remote controlled aircraft, including but not limited to model airplanes, model helicopters, drones, rockets, or gliders, in any public recreational facilities except for in certain of their parks during the months of December, January, February, and March, provided that such crafts are registered with the Parks and Recreation Department. And then it says it doesn't apply to emergency services. So they, have, they do register you. They register you, and it's, I guess they say December through March because they figure out how many people are you ready to park. Sure. And, I can see Mathis and Park. And then certain that. parks, they allow it all the time. Yeah, well, that seems like a framework. I'm going to call I'm gonna call the superintendent there and see what Louis kind of. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, this was passed just in 2018. It was oh, recently good. That passed. sounds like yeah, a reason. That's, that's a good start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good. Well, I think we might also consider time restrictions if we are allowing dog walking at certain times yeah. to start the drones after the dogs are gone. Ask Lewisboro if the yeah, dogs talk to and the drones have a problem with each other. Good. Short term, though, if there's something. Is there a position we're taking? Well, but, but I think what uh, Brian just said was the thing that if it's reckless endangerment, it can be charged. Okay. Yeah. Well, then also, is it doesn't doesn't your your, your parks rules already say you can't have motorized vehicles? Correct. So you can't let anybody launch them. Right. We need it's to make sure that, that we need to know that when when the police are called, that they know what they're enforcing. The problem is problematic. RCs, which well, maybe maybe it is a lot like them, but I mean, a drone can be launched from outside the park, and you'll never yeah. know who's operating that. Yeah. Yeah, 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 no, I know, but it's just there's talking about right, launching. Right. Yeah. Well, at least it gives you some measure of protection. Yep. Yeah. Well, this is launch of land. Yeah, it doesn't say anything about them flying. You do have to get a uh, jamming device, though. <laughs> Reading this quickly, Joe, it looks like it's only uh, airports, not helipads. That's what that was the news. We don't go to helipads county, but is that somebody told me they don't? Can you just confirm that? Yeah. Okay. I don't want to mess up. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Good luck. Okay. Yeah. 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 By the way, outside it's starting to look really nice. Looks good. The bricks great. I love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Now. And I will take care. Yes. We look more back by Christmas. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Comes back. We ran out of bricks. Yeah, they ran out of bricks. How is that possible? I was taking some for my walkway. Every day. <laughs> got six. Good day. Yeah, maybe. Maybe miscounted. Did you say anything important? No. Okay. We were talking about bricks missing. Okay. He's missing a couple of bricks. Parking. Okay. Really? Anyone here was here for parking? Thank you for waiting. Okay. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Actually, this topic is moot because there is no parking anymore. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's all gone. <laughs> Not on Main Street. Anyway. It's all gone. Oh, everyone. Exactly. We don't know where they're going. No. I, it's just like the fast city thing. I, it's, yeah. I keep telling Larry, have you got any complaints today? No. Yeah, the parking is gone. Yeah. And <laughs> Meanwhile, we filmed something somewhere, and it's the end of the world. So. <laughs> I don't get to film and go this week. No comment. No comment. But we got complaints? No, not out. It was fine out in Clifton Place. What about the one? The one here was made a little bit more complicated by the fact that, that uh, just as they were getting set up, a box truck got stuck on North Buckout Street and created basically gridlock down there. Um, so, I, so, I, yeah, I'm kidding me. so after I got screamed at by the owner of a commercial property on the other side of the tracks, um, I, found, I found out that the, the delivery truck that got stuck was actually going to that property. <laughs> in, a bit, in a bit of irony. How did that truck get stuck? It was too big it, it for the... It couldn't make a turn because... At the end of Bond North Buck out. I'll watch the film. Anyway, hey. there you have it. Was traffic being directed around that? No, I think some was, but not, you know, it was, it was kind of sporadic. Anyway, um, yeah, I don't want to get into that. <laughs> so, not a fun morning. Um, Okay, so uh, parking uh, regulations. So uh, you know, we've, been, we've been through some of these changes. They've had a variety of uh, iterations over the, over the last couple of years. But um, the, the summary of uh, where we are right now on the thinking is, uh, is largely attached to the agenda here. You have, you have a copy of all that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so, I mean, really ju jumping down to the changes, which is the second page, um, the, um, well, the first change is easy because you already made it, which is to change the parking on Main Street. This question, I know yes. that came co at the same time as all of the elimination of all parking on Main Street, but <laughs> was there any perceived difficulty or? No. no, I'm not even sure all the signs are deployed yet, so it's kind of in transition. Okay. Um, no, I mean that th there's a lot of signs to be. But nobody cares. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. So basically, yeah, no, it was, it was pretty straightforward. Yeah. Not even on the So then the next. We're going to ask them. And, and I'm not necessarily going to go in order because some of this is is a bit of a windy tale. But um, so you know, a lot of this stems from the original desire to eliminate overnight parking on the. Uh, restrictions on the side streets um, so we are still uh, recommending that overnight parking be allowed throughout the downtown um, it's it's kind of being allowed um, informally now um, but in, until the law gets changed um, by the down just to be sure you mean just streets off of Main Street streets off of Main Street yes I, I'm anywhere else in the village right and Main Street itself, which already had permitted uh, overnight parking. Um, Excuse me, and that will yes. also, that will also address not just residents but business owners who have vehicles that they use for their business now will be able to park them. As business as owners. Hello. Business owners that have vehicles, what that that try, that park them overnight, they'll they'll continue to be allowed. What they've been doing. Right. I mean, that's not that's not prohibited unless you change that. Okay. Which, which is why the topic is to talk about. Well, that's a di that's a different topic. Yeah, right. uh, probably a little bit different audience, but we're a segmented audience. Um. So uh, so overnight parking would be permitted. Um, at the same time, uh, we we talked about uh, cre creating more turnover of spaces on the side streets um, to encourage more turnover uh, in the in the business district um, the, the the way we had proposed to do that was to to convert all of the six hour spaces initially all of the six hour spaces uh, along the side streets of Main Street which are all six hours now uh, convert those to two hour spaces uh, similar to the Main Street spaces the uh, discussion had been that um, that there is need for a certain inventory of um, six-hour spaces, um, especially 
in the vicinity of the railroad station um, for overflow parking that apparently is going on, and we know that firsthand, <laughs> actually many hands. Um, and so the, so the suggestion in this proposal is to keep, um, to not change the hourly restrictions that are currently six hours, not change them on both uh, Buckout Street and Cottonette Street, the two lowest streets. Um, and you don't mention Astor. Yeah, what about I don't believe Astor is, um, I don't believe that most of Astor is six hour currently. I think it's mostly two hour. Um, right. North, it's North it's Astor in front of the business. commercial area. Right, North North Astor in front of the businesses is 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 regulated almost identically to the way the rest of Main Street is, which is two hours. Right. So should that, should that be mentioned here? Uh, well, it's not a change, but I but maybe it, you should say uh, Astor unchanged. Yeah. The one thing I will say on that. I, mean, I have ideas on this too. So as you're changing. <laughs> um, but it, to me, the, the question on the Astor Street, I think one of the commercial buildings is being converted to converted to residential. So is there still a need to keep that all two hour versus making it six hour? Well, it's losing one or two spots as well. Sure, sure. But they're making a, they're making a sort of parking. Side. But don't, didn't they ask for like parking yes, behind? So the they're parking. taking two street they're parking. They're going inside. What are you talking about? Right, 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 right. That new right. development. They're 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 underneath their building. I thought they were. I thought, right? Was that withdrawn? Right. I heard they said going forward. Was there somebody trying to get to the court? I saw Mr. Sorry, the judge is there? Yeah. Yes. The judge is there. Okay, thank you. Yeah, um, I think the issue is, wasn't the issue, it was architectural issues, right? To, uh, engineering well, issues, I, right? Yeah, I, I wouldn't count on that. Okay, so never mind. I, I don't know the yes, go well, I, you, you, you can, if you all agree on that, that's fine, but I would propose that that the Astor Street ones that are right there by the railroad that come in straight, in those be six. Change them from two to six. Those are the, the better ones for the train, and then alleviate. I mean, I you know that you'll hear from the public about taking two of the streets, of the side streets, just two, and allowing those two to be the ones with six hours, rather than finding six-hour spaces elsewhere. Um, so I'm the. I mean, well, we can propose says, whatever. I'm, I'm missing. What? It says there's two, only two streets. Yeah. I know those two streets. I don't think that they should be isolated as having sure. six-hour spots, whereas the other ones change to two hours. The other side streets. Well, then you have you have not enough inventory. There's only like well, then, three or four parking spaces down by. The, right. So by it's it's just different needs. So we talked about that small lot that could be used after the commuters when it's not as crowded after like two o'clock. We talked about the spaces in front of the library. We talked about finding spaces other than on those two side streets. So I you know we'll have a public hearing about this but you know well, we can we lose the inventory. I mean my I, once you start getting there are a lot of people, Connie, that take the train in during the middle of the day, and you can't lose the inventory. Unless we can find them from somewhere, I would be 100% against Well, I, I understand that, but I, I think, you know, you've got to listen to the public that lives there. And well, you've got to listen to the rest of the village yeah, I know. as well that needs to everybody. facilities. This is, this is, you listen to everybody, but... Um, right, but some of the stuff you just, people, we want to encourage people to take the train in. So, unfortunately, uh, they're the train sure. station. Well, you, you know, that's a, I mean, that's that's a lovely argument, but you can also say, you know, if you chose to live far from the train, you understood that you either have to be dropped off or you buy a, you know, wait in line to get. No, there are six hour. There's six hour there are, yeah. and you, There are. Right. So there, there are. So right, anyone have that's this, made a decision. I'm happy to have yeah. you guys put this out as how the majority I thinks almost, here. I but think I don't I almost agree take with some it. of Connie's proposals and, and consider making additional six hours. I think spots. that's great. Yeah, um, yeah. more six hours. Right. make those down there. But I also think, I mean, uh, as someone, I mean, I'm talking about a book because I now use those six hour spots multiple times a week. Um, and I, I often have to work all the way down to the bunk out. You know, not, there's not enough now. But I'm that's telling you, right. it's, it's yeah. competing depends on the time needs. Day. Yeah. Well, but I'm not sure adding spaces on 
Yeah, so Dutcher and Ecker yeah. and on up, it I've really helps helps the situation. Right. I didn't even know there was six hours of yeah. You can make it confusing <laughs> and you you can spread the pain around and 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 make the you know, have them have them come up or change them. I, I just don't I think hey, more, but don't don't single out those two strips. I know, but you're singling them out once you change. But the I, just, I just don't think right now there's a lot of people parking for the train on Dutcher. Right. Yeah. Exactly. We can well, we can eliminate one problem by changing the six on the side streets. You can and make people really walk further. further. Well, you know, unless we could find enough inventory. Well, so that's, what I, that's what I thought of the last two years. We worked hard on doing that. But where? Well, I just I just that, named you certain things. No, but those places are we're talking about during the day and they're restricted. Right. Access because we instance, talked about the Metro North has has at least we have at least thought that they are not necessarily opposed to allowing non. Um, permitted people after a certain time during the day in the afternoon. But so I don't think the other people go into the city at three in the afternoon. I know. So make it that from three, if they would, if they yes, would agree to that, sense. then you've created spots for the afternoon people. Yes, so there are lots of ways to do it. I'm that happens already after six. I mean, effectively, if you're smart, right, like a lot of people, have, and you know, uh, you look at the parking in front of the library, which is two hours until. 7 p.m. You park right. there at 5 and you've got free good. You yeah. go to the city. So all the parking spaces right. in front of the library. There are the come. DPW spots. And, and those are generally and filled full during I know, the day. I know. So but, there, but there are, is that to say that the needs of the people who have decided that they don't want to, I don't know, take an Uber or if we have a van that takes people or picks them up or you get somebody to drop you off, that those needs of those people are greater than the needs of the people that live there. But on the people that live there have lived under these exact same know, situations since they moved here. But they, they also, they've had, they've had um, restaurants with employees. They've had a lot more people crowding that and they will be crowded only on those two Place. But anecdotally, I will tell you that I've never had a hard day. Today I went to the post office at um, well, New, and I got a parking space on right across the street from the post office. There were four other empty right. parking spaces on that street. Right. And I walk around and I see spaces here and there, but I think it's important to listen to the public. Sure. People but we can't there. just listen to some of the public either. Well, no, but we're listening. But, but, can, I think that's all that's of those second. points of view Connie. need to be heard. Connie, for yes. a second. What is the complaint from Buckhouse Street uh, about the six-hour parking? That, and, well, uh, you know, because so, you've got to get, you're going to have to have some kind of, uh, you know, you obviously have to have some kind of car parking in front of the post office that allows right, that they can't, turnover, right, turnover that, right? Right, that they can't park when they come home from work. Okay, but then oh. the, how does that six hour hit, hit that though? It if does. you stop parking enforcement at, if it's two hour parking and I and the parking enforcement stops at six, I park there it's four at four o'clock and then I'm home free. So yeah. it doesn't really, and it doesn't allow them to get a parking spot from work. They come home from work and they've already, all the freebies, you know, everything's taken. Yeah, so you're not solving right. the problem. That's, that's, that's the really sort of thing. If you don't go at, you know, if you go at 3.30, what's the chance you're going to come chalk you know, in? We've we talked about this a number of times. Yeah. So yeah. let's just have a public target. hearing on it and let we know. So just for what their points of view are. Just for information, one of the pieces of information I sent along to Larry Lonke, when knowing that he wasn't going to be here, um, he had a few questions. And one of the questions was, what is the total number of spaces that are six-hour spaces under this proposal that would be available as six-hour spaces. So I'm leaving out Astor Street completely, just for argument's sake, uh, since that could be a moving target, but including North and South Buckout, North and South Cottonette, and then Main Street between those streets is a total of 151 spaces that are all six-hour spaces. So his, his sense was that that's a lot of inventory. Now, there's a lot of demand, yes, but there's also a lot of spaces. And uh, we, my sense and his sense was to, that that didn't need to be expanded up the hill in any meaningful way 
um, just to make it seem like you were avoiding pigeonholing two streets. You know what I mean? And, and that's, that's the way I feel about it as well. But again, I'm just laying out those numbers. Yep. And I think, I, I think there are several other things that go along with this. There's the um, complaints about enforcement that is, is an important component to this, that if people park there and go to the train and they're gone for three or four days and they simply, that car just stays on Buckout Street, it's not a resident, um, and that it's just overlooked on those um, I will, I will speak anecdotally because it's the only information I have. Is that you, <laughs> I've gotten three tickets there. Right. One was for alternate side of the space. One, Kira moved it to the alternate side after, I guess we tried to do it after four hours or whatever. So I know we have been. I think that. alternate side is one that might be enforced, but the other the other ones aren't. I mean, I, I've certainly heard this again. It's also, I mean, we have, Larry and I have spoken about, and there's automated ways of doing yes. it with plate right. readers and things like that. Right. And, and, that, and that, that would too. be, that because it's combined with a GPS and a timestamp, right. and it yeah. automatically alerts you when you would drive by if the car is right. moved exactly. right. or but, hasn't been moved. So. Yeah. But the anecdotally thing, <laughs> you know, if, if the reports are, I've watched the tires not being marked for the six hour, um, you know, rule here and they're simply not being parked you know I know because somebody's car that I know never got marked and I looked at it and it was not marked so there was no enforcement so you know and no is, is what it's worth but well so if you a couple of things I know that it's I would say it's not that it's not enforced but it's it's, it's irregular. It's inconsistently enforced because I have noticed that myself in my own car. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's marked, sometimes it's not. And right. um, I know that after a particular time of day, it's almost doesn't make sense to mark on the mm -hmm. six yeah. spots right. anymore. So you get. But if you had an automated process where you could just, you know, walk by and it would drive through. Well, well, I think this would go over a lot better if there was an automated process or a much more enhanced objective. But I do also oh, think, it, I think it's it, doesn't make, That's it doesn't make sense to do that until we kind of change all the part. Well, no, no, but what yeah. I think it is is it, it would stop once and for all this selective enforcement argument. <laughs> right. Or, you know, because it would say basically just you know, your job is to walk up and down the streets and when the thing beeps, write the ticket. Right. Yeah. I, I, also, I, I also didn't want to cite of the original one of you know Larry. There was a there was another major reason that we started going through this. It's when you looked at all the contradictory pages of the code that are layered on top of each other, which Marianne did a great job of kind of saying. On this page it says this. On this page it says this. You know what? Are, what is the pro what is the police? What is the prosecutor? What are you supposed to say is the law when it's different on one page and another? It was appalling. So we've been trying to change it in my mind for that reason as much as you know. I know it came about because of the overnight, but that was something that's been on my mind for a long time. That but that's a much bigger issue that. than this. Yes. Maybe we can deal with this area with well, these proposed regulations. Well, that is, this is, that actually was well, dealt with it. in a lot. Mm -hmm. you know, this would be that was, thing out that was taken care of. As right? part of those amendments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I mean, we still have to change those amendments. Line, yeah. 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 yeah, You'd be crossing out a lot of those parts, and it would be updated yeah. to yeah, this, yeah, yeah, yeah. to what Can was the problem. Can I ask a question that I, I, I know if I should know this, and I'm going to make the assumption, but I just want to be sure I'm wrong. I'm not wrong. But um, with a residential parking permit, I mean, you have no, there's no limitations at that point. You have a driveway. Between the, what are the hours of limitations of the residential permit? Well, they're, they're right now, I believe they're 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And within that window, you do not need to pay attention to the hourly limits. That's essentially what it is. So you get a free pass. Except the alternate yes. side. I just said the hourly limits. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't. <laughs> yeah, the time, the time limits. Yeah, so well, that there the, is some consideration for the residents. Oh, sure. Yeah, we we wouldn't even be able to have this conversation about reducing from six down to two if it wasn't for the residential right. parking. So there, so there is some. So the residents have some preference on the side streets, no matter what. 
Not if there's no space. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean... Well, coupled with enforcement and two-hour limit, then you... Enforcement is not just ticketing, though. Enforcement at some point is removal of the vehicle. At some point. Or how many tickets does it take before you know you have Kind of, again, it's cost of doing business. If you're willing to pay a ticket because you don't have a... Um, a, a permit to park down there. Well, you can't, you know, want to figure out a different way or get a ride or something else, then. Right, and we, we're not. Suffer. <laughs> And we're not we're not booting cars, but even if we were, it's only when you're outstanding on your parking ticket payments, right. as far as I. So I mean, aware. if a car is there though for four days, it's got its fourth ticket. No, they they can they can tow. They're within their rights to tow to tow the vehicle. Maybe. Please. Yeah. So these um, are these are the things that would go a long way in going along with these changes. Um, the enforcement, the the consistent, um, you know, the changes to make them consistent, and um, the signage being clear. Um, so I got dinged on the alternate side. Yeah. yeah the, the oh yeah. yeah the, the signs, the was, signs, and the mess. There was a discussion with um, DPW that was at least initiated about not having to have as many hours count as alternate side. Right. And I think that would also help. Yeah, we. If those uh, things could happen. I think this would be less of a an issue. Right. They have to all come together, or you know. Well, so I had two other comments, but can you finish what you were saying? Well, about it? Uh, what I, the one thing I did want to point out that uh, kind of got got changed along the way is that there there was a concept here. Oh from the very beginning to make the hourly restrictions on Main Street and the side streets be effective not just from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., but from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. And the theory behind that was, uh, was to continue to keep having parking turn over so that you could address the situation about people coming home from their to, to their place of residence and being able to find a spot um, if the parking was continuing to turn over. Um, that's not here now because you, you heard from uh, Joe Clark at Greenfield about the fact that he was in need of looking to, for places to park his commercial vehicles, which is a whole other topic, on the street after work hours and there was some sympathy to that in the conversation as it was going on so those so that got changed back to 6 p.m. in here but now you know now you're not addressing the other question uh, that you received from residents about finding a place to park when they come home you know that that type of thing so um, yeah because you can't you know yeah, that just forces the window down to six feet and you safe parking, period. Right, which means you can park there from four on, essentially, four o'clock on. So in, in a separate yeah. um, effort on our part, we are looking at these commercial vehicles and what change in those rules we want to make. We discussed that at the last part of a comprehensive plan. Yeah, there was a comprehensive plan yeah. recommendation, and you said put it off as part of this, put it off until this mm -hmm. discussion. So, so the commercial. This is what the, the two recommendations, the two recommendations were, no commercial parking between 8 p.m. and 6 a.m. on Main Street and the side streets, except where specifically permitted. And then the other one was that um, commercial parking could be for one hour only. Between 6 a.m. and 8 p.m., except one provide the service of delivery, that would be for the side streets only. That was. Sort of, 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 no commercial parking at all, but then the board, when we discussed, it seemed to think it should be for one hour. So you could commercial parking for one hour only. 
You're talking 6 a.m. and 8 p.m. Because of the fact that we wanted to allow someone to be working on the site, like a plumber. No, no, no. no. Like no there there's, there's an exception for providing right. service and delivery. You, you could be there for four hours. Let's say you were moving somebody in or out. You could be there for four hours. But you could park for only one hour between 6 a.m. and 8 p.m. That was for the side streets only. That restriction would not be And that's their lunch break or something? I, I don't know what the reason was. I can't remember why. Originally, was. we said not at all. Yeah, no not commercial right. so parking. Who, who and then somebody in? suggested the one hour. I don't know who suggested the one hour parking, but everybody agreed on it. We need a blockchain of these ideas. <laughs> what? The providence of them. How late was it when we agreed on it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. But that, we that's about true. five after ten. <laughs> 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 you know, commercial parking for one hour. I don't know. I mean, huh? but that. The, the, I mean, it seems to me it's not really necessary if you've got the, the, um, the working and providing the service and delivery. The only thing it is, is come back to, if you're coming back to your place of business, I mean, yeah, you're you're your, your, your office list. here, yeah, you're coming mm -hmm. back for lunch or something. Right. Get something to eat. <laughs> but, yeah. But so, you know, it seems we can we can continue to go round and round as we have been doing for many, many months on this, or we can move ahead and open it up for public discussion. Yeah. One other option to think about, because I was thinking this when I was reading, because we, it's always like the unintended consequences or the things you don't anticipate, which sounds like such a good idea until you actually try and do it, is, and I don't know if this is possible, can we pass something for a specified time period and reevaluate? We can always reevaluate. Yeah, I mean the, the signs, signs and everything, right? The signage is the tough part. Yeah. Okay. Never mind. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. The, the the part about that has come home to me in the discussion about the commercial vehicles, Marianne, which I'm trying to recall, but I I walked up and down Main Street and saw the commercial vehicles. Actually, you know, and I've seen this before on the sidewalk because you have to bring the wheels to, to cut, try to bring the back of, away from the traffic coming down Main Street. But they're not only on the sidewalk now; they're on the the um, the the, the uh, tree wells. So it's just the size of those vehicles is a big part of the problem for the pedestrians, for the traffic getting through, for so many reasons that. I, I, I'm thinking being more serious about the controls um, because of that size issue. Yeah. Well, you, you didn't really address that because you started talking about it. no, no, but because even these changes wouldn't address it on Main on Main Street because we, we can't have the commercial parking at night. But between 6 a.m. and 8 p.m., there aren't any. Proposed restrictions on commercial parking. So how do you have to? Well, you have to I'm sorry. No, you have you have to tread lightly on your restricting of parking of commercial vehicles in the commercial district during commercial it's hours. Commercial <laughs> district. Yeah. So, no, I mean it, that doesn't mean people can go parking on sidewalks and on tree wells. That's, a, yeah. that's kind of a different issue. But well, I mean, actually. They have to park on sidewalks. Well, they're parking right. right away. Unless they were parking yeah. on the uh, it's south side of Main Street where it's parallel parking. It's not the... Right, and then you right. have to have enough loading zones. So. Right, so you don't have the loading yeah. zones, and it's impossible. I, I understand that this, this is... Some you have to... Wouldn't it be illegal parking to park on the sidewalk? Yeah, I believe it is. Yeah. But okay. they're doing it because they're like a contractor and they're going into Joe Hardware to get something and they're parked up on the, I, I mean, it happens all the time. Yeah. So unless you have like a, like the, the hardware store on the other side of uh, Main Street lined up straight, not as a, 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 what do you call this, angle, and then you have somebody from the store, a police officer, helping traffic get around so you can see and get out. So we're using the only on their regular shift, so we're talking overtime to do an, a loading zone? Yeah. The, the, um, it's those, if you lose regular parking spots, um, and they'd be yellow striped, and they'd be loading for areas. Loading, right. loading zones only. We have one by Jordan's. Yeah, right. And they have, well, they have one up here. It's not really, but it's kind of. So you need some more of those for right. commercial vehicles. Right. It sounds to me like part of the issue 
is that um, I would be cautious about okay. voting okay. zones. Thank you so much. Changing, yeah. changing voting zones and stuff like that, or defining new ones until we actually. The other component here is the visibility of the corners. Yes. And you know, um, so so it's kind of like a. I would mind if we took the commercial stuff to the side for a second bite and tried to just get the residential, the majority of the residential part. Yes, solve everything at once and let's not, let's not, a great deal of work has not added to this. You've been, you've been, the word patient has been used several times tonight, but I would say again with this, but let's, let's try to at least move ahead with this. There's many connected issues with the commercial stuff, so let's not try to, yeah, we have to get some kind of, we have to change the baseline right. and then tweak it. I mean, it's like, you know, it's the new way of doing any kind of development, right? It's like, we can't, if we try to put this all together, we will deliver nothing we get done. So the, there is the one component that um, needs a little bit of development, but I'll at least describe an example of it is, um, so, so now you have um, the central, let's call it the central business district. So the, you know, the Dutcher, Ecker, Ferris, that whole area will now have side streets that are two-hour spaces. There are plenty of employees that work in those businesses um, that will uh, need to find places to park. Um, we are not suggesting that they go down to the bottom of the hill and find spaces on Buckhouse Street. Don't think that I was going to say that because um, that would defeat the entire previous argument. Um, what the, my suggestion has been is to, uh, to, to modify the provisions of the residential parking permit law to allow for a limited number of those to be issued to uh, businesses. Um, the, the part that would not be, the part that isn't accounted for by those residential parking permits would be accounted for by the daytime permits being available in the aqueduct parking lot. I think there are there are spaces available. Right now, it's a little more crowded than usual, and I think that's where some of the people are parking. But um, but normally there are some spaces available, so that would that would take uh, that by changing these regulations would take some of those people off of the streets and into the parking lot, which is ultimately a good thing. Great. So I, my question was, when I was thinking about this, is the businesses come in all different sizes, so there were two questions. Because uh, I know you had originally done some parking inventory by three segments, and you were talking, mm -hmm. you know, obviously the businesses were, employees would prefer to be closer to their business if possible. I'm sure that there's probably a radius, optimum radius of walking up and down the hill, and whatever. But um, you've got some real differences in the number of employees at places. So how do you how do you recognize that? For instance, somewhere like Jordan's has got like, ten or fifteen employees, and some of them may come in together. Some may commute on the train. But a lot of them walk. Huh? I think a lot of them are fairly local and they walk to work. I don't know. So what I'm saying is that. That, and then you have other places that might only have two employees. So there's a uh, there's a real disparity. It's not by address, you know. It's by so how, yeah. yeah. So how do you do that, and how yeah. do you keep it fair? Because you yeah. can't say this is this is part of it that needs some more development. But I think um, you know we've we've done surveys, for example, of businesses to tell us uh, you know how many they how many they need on any at any given point in time is really what you're looking at it's not a per employee thing it's basically a per employee slot you know uh, how many are needed and uh, we we would issue uh, some number probably slightly less than what is actually needed so that the balance can be found in the aqueduct for example I mean it's, that, that part needs a little bit of a little bit of development. Brian and I talked about this before the meeting, even. Um, you know that, but that's the concept anyway. Yeah, it's capped number or something. Yeah, it would make exactly. it more than six, even if you have twenty-five employees. But you know, remember these are. It's, I think you gotta watch out. It's true. I agree. Certain businesses, I don't know why you're punishing them. They've been business like. Yeah, I think it depends. I mean, I think it's also if you have someone else comes in that runs a call center, then you can't just give it. You know, like there has to be. 
Yeah, I think that at some point you can't just say every employee right. gets one. Yeah, I, I think you're right, Brian. Right. No, right. but we don't have call centers. Yeah. We don't. Yeah. Uh, we used to. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we, we have one. We have one in, in Grid Street. Street. It was on Astor. It was yeah. on uh, North on South Buckhouse. Oh, Lawrence. Yeah. Lawrence. yeah. I'm sorry. North, North, North Aster. North Aster. North Aster. North Aster. Mm -hmm. North Aster. Mm -hmm. North Aster. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, there was one, I think, in the Trent Building as well at one point. Yeah. So, but I think we have to do something that doesn't, you know, sure. these yeah, existing right. businesses that have grown the way they have naturally, organically, and you can't, you can't just put a six slot. No, no, I don't think you're getting a percentage of. I mean, look, the, the people are parking on the streets as it yeah, is. Like They'll be happy for. It. Well, when we had that small charrette or whatever we yeah, called it, kind of adverse. We did have business uh, owners come mm -hmm. in. Um, this is enough years ago, maybe the four years ago by now. Yeah. Um, and floated the idea, and it was incredibly well received. Like something was better than nothing. It wasn't. I, I think the expectation was, I don't expect all my employees to always have, but that they have something right next that's to like it. really wonderful. Right. So yeah. would that be? But you. you would eliminate their need to churn and, and yes. move cars. But did, right. are they restricted as to would there be like zones so you have a parking permit? Yeah, I thought you couldn't do no, that. No, we kind of, I kind of, abandoned. I kind of abandoned that idea once the lower part of Main Street turned into six hour parking. <laughs> kind of eliminated the, the need to zone it. But that's another argument for keeping those six hour spots because they will not just be used by commuters, but by, because obviously it's going to be to the advantage of an employee for a business to walk up the hill a couple of blocks and they only have to move their car if they can park right. for six hours rather than they have to move it three times for two hour right. parking. Yep. Obviously, this all calls for a uh, parking garage at the bottom of Main Street. That's, oh, that's on the other side. Yeah, did you see that? Yeah, the uh, the two level master. Yeah, yeah. The, the two level created extra thirty <laughs> Which spaces. Word is that? Capital you don't have a word. Yeah, you don't have a word. Yeah, we had a picture. Exactly. We did. We had a very nice uh, picture. All right. So, is there is there any North Astor? No. I, just so I, I have directions. Like um, is there any? Any feeling about the hourly restrictions, the hours being 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. as opposed to the 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. that we originally so talked about? Against 8 to 6 is pro-resident or no. pro? It was pro-business. Pro-business. And 8 to 8 is pro-resident. Yeah. I guess I'd start with the 8 to 8, and um, but that's just me. What time do you... Well, that, that's an interesting question because what time do people come home and what time do, do businesses have shift changes? Well, I mean, it's, it's, it depends on the business, yeah. I mean, it depends on the job. That's almost an impossible question to answer. I understand that, but I'm just saying that that's the kind of thing. Well, yeah, you would love to have a, an absolute, like a chip in everybody's. Oh. <laughs> well, you know, restaurants are, gonna be, are open past eight, so restaurants have the longer, mm. you know, the longer shift. Right. Yeah, but they're done. But that five to eight or something, or five to right. five. five to eleven. Yeah, but 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 the employees potentially have the tag, so they won't have to worry about that. Right. Some of them. Right. Some of them. Not yeah, all. No, I was thinking it's six versus the eight. So when do most when do most people come home from work? I'm sure. I six, guess. six to seven. Yeah, I mean, you know, yeah. whatever. Yeah. yeah. I think uh, enough people come home after six. I think seven is not unusual. Right. We're, we're just guessing here. No, people, no, guessing. people come home at all hours. Yeah. Why, don't we, why don't we start with something and then right. we'll get right. feedback? Okay. That's why I said that's why I was throwing well, out. So no. it's now well, going it's, back to the original. Now the restrictions had. last till anywhere between five and six, mostly six. But the proposal here is from eight to six. So why do we leave it there? Okay. See that this proposal, a lot of discussion went into developing this proposal. Let's see how it works. We never have to worry in this town about people not complaining if it doesn't work. So I'm sure we'll find <laughs> it. Silence suffers. Okay. Got it.
And there's also a thing where the Apricot parking rules will continue to allow non-resident parking. No, yeah, that's, that's actually no change. Yeah, change. yeah, we, we were, that would have changed if the 8 p.m. thing yes. changed, but, so, anyway. Okay. I would say the, uh, the only the only other thing I'll throw out on parking is I, I keep struggling with commercial because I think I get the I think in a perfect world you wouldn't have any commercial parking, um, but I almost feel like if someone happens to have a business that needs commercial vehicles, um, we're going kind of going out of our way. To, we're not out of our way. We're trying to keep in mind the restaurants and all the other businesses by giving them permits and things. But now we're saying, hey, if you have a commercial business, you run it here for. 40 years, you're not going to be able to park in Irvington. And I know some people are like, find somewhere else to park, but I, I'm thinking maybe it's almost a similar thing where we don't want random commercial vehicles parking overnight, but maybe we have a certain amount right. for a locally run, Agreed. you know, for the local business gets a certain amount. I mean, again, it makes it much more Isn't complicated. That what the DPW so where do they get the bus? Uh, that that is part, part of it is, absolutely. absolutely. And there's parking on, I mean, there's parking around the corner on North Astor. South Astor uh, in front of So I think uh, we, if we can figure South out something that kind of, you know, <laughs> that kind of um, that co you know, accommodates some, because some, there are some that have been here for a while, and it's, you know, to me, it's like, you know, I started a business 40 years ago, and now I can no longer park in town. It, to me, it's, you know, I, I, I'm sympathetic with that, that argument. Well, yeah. if I understood the next set of changes, they're not going to... Company. We're not going to go commercial. Right. I'm, just, I'm, just more go to commercial. I'm more planting oh. a seed. Oh, okay. We don't have to talk about it tonight, but yeah. I'm just planting a no, seed. No, but you know what? There, there may be creative ways of doing it, especially using the aqueduct parking lot, for example, because... That's I, all I'm saying. I, I, I think we're not trying to help. There's only one aqueduct parking lot, though. I know, but... It's now has 7,000 spots. <laughs> <laughs> what about the churches and the... Where all the... the, the, the well, yeah, we made those suggestions. Well, so. Why don't the people in Buckhouse Street park there? Well, you know, like it's like... It's, uh, <laughs> I will, but there, there may be less demand overnight for the aqueduct parking lot if we allow overnight, overnight parking, parking on the streets. Okay, so, so let's, in which case, I'm just saying plant the seed because I don't want to single out just one group of businesses yeah, yeah. in town. That we're we're we, we, need to, we need to address the commercial parking the next round. And, and, and you know, those wherever there are reserved spots for village employees during the workday, that we should be looking at those spots. So there's some near the parking lot as well. Uh, parallel parking. Yeah. Like well, Larry obviously needs his parking until midnight. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Got it. All right. Are we down? Yes. All employees can park in any kind of red pavement, uh, red red sidewalk. All I want is to have a reserved spot for BRT meetings so that we can actually park somewhere. Are we adjourned? We're adjourned. Okay. Right. I'll make a motion to adjourn. If I got a second. All in favor. Aye.